something uh, sexier than the new iPhone. You might think of a sleek new sports car or a rocket ship, as promised. With me now is Elon Musk. He's the founder, the chairman, and the CEO of the electric car maker Tesla, as well as the rocket maker, you could say, SpaceX. Elon, great to have you here with us. You'll be with us through the half hour. Okay, first off, before we get into your companies, mm -hmm. I got to talk iPhone with you. Did you okay. get yours? No, I don't have an iPhone 5 yet. No. You don't have one. Okay. <laughs> so what do you think of how the company's done? How the company has done with the iterations of the iPhone? Well, I, I think the Apple's done done a great job. I mean, it, it seems as though the the iPhone 5 is is a is a better iPhone 4, um, but it's not clear beyond that what it is. Um, I, I'm a little disappointed that uh, Google Maps is not on the iPhone 5. Mm. That's but I, I don't have one, so I don't really. I can't speak. To you it. are going to get one, though. I, I will certainly get one to, to to try it out. Yeah. Well, you've got to, right? You have to at least yeah, at, sure. at least try Absolutely. it out. All right, Elon. Let's talk about some of your companies. I want to start first with Tesla, though. Uh, as I'd mentioned earlier, you know, your stock is on a tear. You just got upgraded this past week by Morgan Stanley right. uh, to overweight. Uh, and a lot of people are saying, look, you know, this is a stock that's been undervalued, and there's been a lot of underestimations about where Tesla's going to go with right. its production. Uh, first off, where are you production-wise with the Model S? Well, um, I can only talk um, in terms of uh, information that's been already disclosed. So I can't, I can't you know, as a public company, I can't reveal material non-public information <laughs> right now. Um, you could. You just might get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but... Um, but I think I think things are going going reasonably well. Um, our, our focus it, it, with respect to production is uh, on quality, um, and we'll, we'll, it, it's much better for us to uh, go at a rate that allows us to deliver very high quality cars, yes. than try to accelerate that rate and potentially deliver low quality cars. Um, and it's worth noting that you know, we started deliveries, as people are aware, in in June of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, there have been uh, no recalls. There have been no fires. There have been no anything. No. Right. I mean, you've got to get it right. Reviews. You've got to get it right the first absolutely. time out. I mean, you depend. first impressions matter. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I want to just bring up because this is what Morgan Stanley had pointed out in their report, uh, which is they said, look, Elon Musk is focused on quality. He's got to get it right coming right out of the gate yeah, uh, for Tesla. And I want to bring up this chart that we have because they say this focus on quality may be the reason why you may miss your targets where you you know they estimate uh, that you know US made 5,000 by the end of this year they say you could maybe perhaps meet half of that they say uh, you said that you you know you want to hit 20,000 by next year Morgan Stanley says it's probably going to be more like around 15,000 because you want to focus more on quality and not so much pushing out these cars well I, I think um Again, I can't comment on, on sort of sort of near-term stuff. Um, I, I have in the past, uh, uh, on, on a few occasions, said uh, that there are three things that I'm very confident of achieving. Um, and so if, if I may simply reiterate those, those three things, mm -hmm. um, those were that we would start production no later than July of this year, and we, we actually were able to start production in June. Uh, the, the second one was that uh, we would uh, produce at least 20,000 cars in 2013. Um, and you and believe you'll do that? I believe we will do that. Um, and the third thing is that we would um, achieve a gross margin in, except, in, ex, in excess of 25%, and I remain confident of, of those three things. So of okay. those three things, I, 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 I stand by those. Okay. All right, Elon, we'll be back with you to talk more about Tesla. And, of course, we'll talk more about SpaceX with Elon Musk back with us in two minutes. Stay in the loop. We are about seven minutes into the trading session. Of course, we're watching Apple shares. And you can see that the Dow is up right now by 36 points higher by three tenths of one percent. Now, we're also watching the shares of Tesla because I am back with Elon Musk. He's the founder, chairman, and CEO of the electric car maker Tesla, and also, of course, the founder of SpaceX. Now, uh, I just want to spend a little bit more time, uh, Elon, just on Tesla. Now, you mentioned the three goals that you have for the car company. Right. Uh, one of the production goals as well that has, is out there is that you want to have 5,000 cars delivered by the end of this year. Is that another goal that you will be able to reach? Well, actually, I, I need to be very hesitant about talking about any near-term um, metrics for, for, for Tesla. So I think that the, the most I'm comfortable say, saying is reiterating those, those three things that I mentioned. Okay. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the 20,000, you know, the fact that we would start production. You are going to get 20,000 by next year. The 20,000 next year and 25% gross margin next year. The, those are the three things I feel comfortable iterating. But, but any, any sort of 
really near-term stuff I think I have to be very cautious of doing to not run afoul of, you know, disclosure of material public information. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. Now, though, I, demand is not the problem, though, for you, right? You said demand, demand is, not is not a problem. Demand is not a problem for Tesla, no. no. In fact, uh, uh, we, we have, uh, we have a, a really high demand for, for our cars. Um, and in fact, uh, the, 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 uh, probably the biggest reason people don't put down a reservation payment for our car is that they have to wait too long to get it. <laughs> <laughs> And, and they need a car, and they, so that literally is well, but, the biggest the, issue. The, the demand is what's got the gov you know what's got the Obama administration pretty excited about electric electric cars, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I think President Obama has come out and said that he'd like to see one million electric vehicles on the road uh, in three years by 2015. Is that too ambitious? Well, I think it's unlikely to be a million in three years, but I do think we'll see perhaps a million in maybe six to eight years. In six to eight years, mm -hmm. okay. And there's a lot of competition coming on board, uh, including Coda Automotive, which they've got an electric car that's priced uh, a little bit cheaper than yours, around thirty-seven thousand right. dollars, backed by Phil Falcone, uh, former Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson, yeah. and you're looking like. Mm, <laughs> um, I, I don't think Coda is going to survive. Um, Why is that? The, the car is, it's just not good value for money. Um, if you look at the car, and this is not from some desire to denigrate competition, I, it, it's simply, it, it's simply. If you look at the car, it looks like a sort of maybe 1990 knockoff of a Toyota Corolla for forty thousand dollars. So why would you buy that? Well, is there a price that it could be bought at, though? I mean, it, you know, thirty. Like fifteen thousand dollars, maybe. Okay. Do you see a market opening up for that cheap of a? For cheaper end electric cars? Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, there is. If, if if somebody were to were to produce a, a compelling uh, electric car at say thirty thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars, I think it would, it would definitely sell. In fact, uh, at Tesla, our third generation vehicle, that's what we intend to do: is to produce uh, a car that costs around thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, um, and that um, you know increases the affordability relative to say the Model S, which starts at around fifty to sixty thousand uh, dollars. Elon, tell me about this announcement you're going to make on Monday. It's yeah, great. That's charge. what I'd love, love to talk about. Yeah, because uh, a lot of the you know some of the uh, I guess hesitation about electric cars is well, how am I going to get it on? How am I going to take long tri road trips on this? You know, where yeah. am I going to charge? How am I going to charge this car up? So how are you exactly addressing that with the supercharger? Well, that's so we're going to have a big unveil um, on Monday night, um, and I think people are going to be pretty amazed. Uh, this is the the feeling I want people to have is is like when you come to a, a highway rest stop, you're doing a long distance trip, it, you, you, you see this thing. And it looks like an alien spaceship has landed in this otherwise drab highway rest stop. You know, highway rest stops are not really <laughs> very exciting places. I mean, they're they have be. their own charms, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them have charms, but not many. Okay. Um, and, and we really want this to be sort of like a, like a beacon of hope and inspiration. Um, something that looks like this amazing alien sculpture in uh, So you want, to open, you want to open 10 of these? Or, or how many do you want to open of these? Or, or how, what are we talking about here around the country? Um, we're we're going to do... We're actually going to uh, enable people to travel across anywhere in the country, anywhere in the United States. Um, so there'll, there'll be uh, probably over a hundred, um, and uh, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll allow you to travel anywhere in the country, and then ultimately we're going to do this in other parts of the world as well, so ultimately you'll be, be able to drive anywhere in the world. Um, yeah. and, and there are, there are a number of cool things that I'll reveal Monday night, um, but the, the, the key takeaway... Can take you say what they are? <laughs> <laughs> the key takeaway is that I, I'm, I'm really confident that the supercharger will completely alleviate people's concerns about range with electric vehicles. Mm, okay, because that is a major, major concern. The other one is, of course, service. Where am I going to get this car sure. serviced? Um, Elon, the company, though, you know, is burning through cash. Or you're spending a lot of cash, obviously, yeah. to get these cars on the market. So uh, by the end of this year, I think there's some estimates that you'll have about $130 million on hand. Are you going to have to raise more capital? Well, that's something that, that we're considering. Um, and, and I've mentioned the fact that we're considering this uh, before. Um, so, um, well, I, I, can't, I can't talk to the specifics of that, but it's something You mean a secondary offering, possibly? It's, it's a possibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Elon, we'll be back with you in just a few moments. I want to talk now about SpaceX, and so we're going to go off Earth, uh, <laughs> of Earth and talk, into, uh, talk about SpaceX. Also want to get uh, Elon's take on uh, the economy election as well. Stay with us on In The Loop. Well, I am back with Tesla and SpaceX chairman and CEO Elon Musk. Let's talk a little bit about SpaceX. Sure. Uh, you had a huge accomplishment this past May. You launched your first rocket to the space station. NASA Thanks. called it absolutely incredible. Thanks. 
And you are about to launch cargo missions, or your first cargo mission on October 7th from Cape Canaveral, right? Um, well, actually, this will be our second cargo mission. The one earlier this year was our first cargo mission, the space station. This will be our first, what's called operational cargo mission. So okay. that, that one was a demonstration. And this uh, one is the. Th this this one's kind of like the. Well, oper first operational mission. Although, I mean, they're the real thing? pretty much the same thing. <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, and you're yeah. on track for that, right? Y yeah. Okay, because Orbital had come out just, I think it was even just yesterday, saying that they had to delay their own mission, I think, from, from just this month to later on in the year. Right. I, I think it's unlikely. I think they'll probably launch next year. You think so? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, how would you, I mean, not to, for you, not, not to put you on the spot and for you to denigrate or, or, or not your yeah. competitors, but what do you make of, I mean, because this is becoming a, a competitive space, what do, you think of, uh, what do you think of their rocket? Sure. Well, um, the, the NASA has issued two contracts for supplying the space station, one to SpaceX and one to Orbital Sciences. Right. Uh, we have the primary contract in that we have 12 missions, they have eight missions, and we have the, we have the entire responsibility for bringing stuff back from the space station. So their, their system can go up, but it can't come back. Um, where, where I think they have challenges um, uh, is, is in, the, in the, the way that they've designed the rocket, where it's using uh, Russian engines from, that were built in the 60s, uh, Ukrainian. Literally built in the 60s. Uh, quite literally built in the 60s. And not a design from the 60s, but actually built in the 60s, hmm. um, tied to a Ukrainian first stage, uh, attached to an American solid rocket s second stage, and then an Italian cargo module. So I think it's, it's difficult, you know, we've got so many languages and time zones and you're trying to combine all those things, it, it's, a, it's a challenge. Now, I don't know a whole lot about this area, but from what I've read, Orbital wants to do cargo and intelligence missions. Is that also what you are looking to do with yours as well? Well, we have uh, uh, many customers for our rockets. So of the, we, we now have about 46 launches under contract. Uh, Twelve of those are for NASA. Uh, but the others are for a wide range of, of commercial companies. So we have contracts to launch uh, broadcasts and communication satellites, mapping satellites, um, space science experiments. Um, so it's, it's, so um, NASA is our biggest and most important customer, but uh, almost three quarters of our customers are commercial. Okay. Uh, obviously, a very capital intensive uh, you know, industry. People are saying, talking about an IPO. You've talked, to, you know, you've made some remarks about that. What can we expect with a SpaceX IPO? Well, um, I think the timing for a SpaceX IPO is really going to be when we're doing a very steady cadence of launches. So launching, sort of launching once every two to three weeks. Um, so I wouldn't, ex and I'd also like to get our Falcon Heavy uh, rockets uh, to flight before. Before you think about listing them, before you think about going public. Yeah, and okay. uh, the, the Falcon Heavy is going to be a really um, amazing rocket because it's uh, it, it'll be the most powerful rocket in the world by a factor of two. So twice as big as anything that Russia or China has or anything that Boeing has. Um, you can imagine if, if there was a plane that was, say, twice the size of the A380 or 747. That, that's um, wow. this, this is a big, big, big rocket. Uh, Elon, just quickly, we had our, another billionaire on uh, on our program, uh, not this particular program, but on Street Smart, uh, Richard Branson, sure. who has the same ambitions to populate Mars, and he wants to, uh, he, w he has built his business uh, partly on that. I want you to just hear what he had to say. Okay. Next year, Virgin Galactic will finally be born properly, and, you know, that, and, and then, you know, we will start taking people into just giving them a taste of space. Um, and then in time, we'll be taking people onto orbital trips. And then, you know, going a step further, I hope, you know, we, I hope we'll be taking people into, in, you know, right, right into the depth of space. So he has the same ambitions as you do. Right. Uh, well, I, I think, I'm, I think uh, maybe um, we're, we're at different stages in, in, in that uh, progress. Um, so what, what Virgin Galactic is aspiring to do is to do uh, suborbital flights, which are basically you sort of shoot up and then fall down. Um, but I mean, just to put things into perspective, I mean, our Falcon Heavy rocket um, has a hundred times the thrust of the, what Virgin is, gonna, is aspiring to launch next year. So li literally a hundred times. Really? Yeah. Okay. So. So, um, so yours will be different. In, I mean, uh, obviously other than that. But then, so, so what are your? So what are your? What's the biggest differentiator then? Well, I think the magnitude. I mean, li literally, like I said, essentially, what 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 um, 
uh, Virgin Galactic will be launching. Their, their rocket is 1% the size of ours. Mm, okay. So it's quite a big difference. Okay. A <laughs> hundred times different. All right, yeah. Elon, thank you. Oh, actually, we'll be back with you with just some final thoughts with Elon Musk from Tesla and SpaceX back in two. Well, Elon Musk with us uh, with some final thoughts, the CEO and founder, of course, of Tesla and SpaceX. And Elon, I just want to spend a little bit of time uh, just talking a little bit more about the economy and the jobs market. You know, so there's so much talk about how there's a fight for talent in Silicon Valley. Are yeah. you finding that as well for your companies? Well, I, I think we're fortunate in, in that with uh, Tesla and SpaceX, we're, we're not uh, just fighting for, say, software engineers. Um, we're, we're, in the case of, of SpaceX, I think we're the best place if, if you're any if you're an engineer interested in aerospace. Mm -hmm. I think SpaceX is the the, the best place um, for you. I mean, it's, I think we're the most most attractive place to go, and and I think Tesla Motors has a similar reputation in automotive engineering. But do you find that uh, uh, that that wage costs are rising for you at all? That you have to pay more to get the same people? Uh, not really, no. Um, I mean, we, we, uh, fr from a salary standpoint, we, we will often um, offer less than people are making at other places. Mm -hmm. Although we do offer stock options so that, that people people have an, uh, um, a stake in the upside. There's in the fact, potential. Yeah. In fact, I believe strongly in offering stock options to everyone. So everyone at Tesla has, has w without exception, uh, has stock options. Uh, Elon, just quickly, uh, Marissa Meyer is somebody that you know very well. Yeah. Uh, she got a great job there at Yahoo as a CEO. What's what's your what's your final thought on her? Well, I, I have a lot of respect for Marissa, and, and I think she'll she'll do a good job with with Yahoo. It's, it, it is a tough thing to to turn around, but I think uh, Marissa's got a real good shot. Okay, Elon, thanks for spending the last half hour with us. Really appreciate it. Right. Elon Musk, the chairman and CEO of Tesla, and also of SpaceX, and we'll be back.